Hello everyone, welcome to session 11 of LTEC 623 Digital Video Design. In this video, we're going to cover two topics. First, we're going to explore the relationship between learning outcomes in video genres as described in the 2007 Schwartz and Hartman article. Then, we're going to introduce our second video project, which is going to focus on chalk and talk videos. So let's get started. For the past couple of weeks, we've been focused in on the production of our video. Now I want to bring us back out to this graphic, the idea that we're studying video in the context of education. And with that, I want to turn to the Schwartz and Hartman article, who really emphasize that learning outcomes are important. And in that article, they point out that a significant challenge for any designer of learning involves deciding exactly what people are supposed to learn. They argue that answering that question, what people are supposed to learn, determines the intended goal or outcome of the learning experience. To make this a little bit more concrete, they provide a useful example. This idea of asking an American to learn the sport of cricket. What is the goal of that learning? Is it to learn how to play cricket? Is it to learn how to explain the history of the game of cricket and where it came from? Or is it to be able to discern or recognize good high-level cricket play versus poor or amateur levels of play? Or is the idea of asking people to learn about the sport of cricket simply to get them interested so that they want to learn more? The point that the authors are trying to make with this example is that we need to be clear about learning outcomes because how video would be used might be different for each outcome. So to help educators use video more effectively, they have developed this map of different learning outcomes. What is this map? Well, it's really a framework for matching different genres of video with different types of learning. And they did that because they acknowledged that there are many different types of video and there are many different types of learning and that different applications of video are more or less appropriate for each type of learning. So they wanted to provide some structure to help us make more educated decisions about what genre of video to use when we're trying to achieve a certain learning outcome. So let's zoom out a little bit and take a look at this diagram. So the structure of this, there's basically five levels. In the center, we have four broad classes of learning outcomes. Seeing, doing, engaging, and saying. From there, we come out to different approaches to achieving learning outcomes. From there, we go out one more level to the types of behaviors that we might expect from a learner if learning has actually occurred. And then finally, we zoom out one level more to focus on the relevant video genre that might be applicable if we're trying to accomplish or achieve that type of learning outcome. So let's take a closer look at each quadrant of this map. The first quadrant is focuses on seeing. And we all know that videos can help people see things that they could not see before. For example, video can help promote familiarity. How? Well, by introducing people to phenomena they are unlikely to have seen before. This idea really counts on people recognizing what is new and what is novel. And, of course, relevant genres that apply to this approach has to do with tour videos or portrayals such as period pieces, nature shows, historical recreation, so on and so forth. Videos can also help promote discernment. How do they do this? Well, they can help people perceive details they might otherwise overlook. This presupposes that novices may not see what is significant, even though it is in plain sight. In other words, this is all about educating perception. Relevant video genres include point of view videos, simulated experiences, or highlighting. Now, one of my favorite examples of videos that promote discernment is the PBS show Antiques Roadshow. And in these videos, what you have is an expert highlighting important details about some antique that someone has brought in. So let's watch an example of this. 
This watch uh, was handed down from my great-grandfather. He was the owner of the St. Paul Pioneer Press and Dispatch back in 1914 when he received this watch. And it was handed down from him to my father and then he gave it to me. It's manufactured by the Patek Philippe Company of Geneva, Switzerland. This is a photocopy of the original warranty depicting some of the complications of this watch. The front of the watch has the hour and minute hand and the second hand. Mm -hmm. It also has a split chronograph, so you can time two things. It also has a minute register for the chronograph. Off to the side is a slide for chiming the watch. It's called a minute repeater, where you lift up the slide and it'll chime the time to the minute. Okay. When we flip the watch over, you have the day, the date, and the month, along with the moon phase. It's also a perpetual calendar, which adjusts for leap year. It's a very complicated watch. So there you have it, an excellent example of using video to help promote discernment. Another quadrant of the map focuses on engaging as a learning outcome. And this has to do with video offering a pull that brings people to a situation or topic and keeps them involved, preparing them for learning. So how might we go about that? Well, video can help promote interest by emphasizing how the target content is relevant and or engaging. The idea here is that we're piquing curiosity or showing the relevance of a topic. Relevant video genres include advertisements, trailers, and triggers, things you're all familiar with. Also, video can help contextualize information. This is a way of engaging people. How? Well, by providing background information or activating prior knowledge. The idea here is to anchor the meaning of subsequent activities, contextualizing the learning and the problem solving that's to come. Relevant video genres related to contextualizing information have to do with case studies or anchors. And there are some very good examples of this out there. So a really great example of promoting interest is the beauty of science videos focusing on chemistry. Here's an example of a video you might show to a class of students to really get them interested in what's going on and preparing them for subsequent lessons on chemistry. of the map focuses on doing as a learning outcome. And the idea here is that video can be ideal for presenting human behaviors that others can model and learn from. Video can help shape attitudes by providing a model. One thing to be careful of here is that people can model other people so well that learning of attitudes can actually be unintentional. And relevant video genres include actual modeling something or role playing and of course, identification. Relatedly, video can help people learn skills by providing opportunities for learners to imitate the behavior shown in a video. Complex skills can be decomposed, replayed, zoomed, and slowed down. And of course, good procedural instruction discerns the behaviors that are significant. And we've all seen different types of demonstrations or step-by-step -step instructions to help us understand a particular skill. And the final quadrant of the map focuses on saying as a learning outcome. And this is the idea that video and, and many other forms of media can help people verbalize facts and develop explanations. Video can help people acquire facts by conveying information at various levels of sophistication. Of course, other media are good at this too, and the types of video genres that might be used here are associations. The, the example they use in the story is with Sesame Street. 
and how they pair entertaining images with different names to help them memorize numbers and letters. We also have chronicles such as news broadcasts and narratives that deliver facts embedded within the context of a larger story. Video can also help people develop explanations by providing reasons as to why and how different phenomena occur. One thing to keep in mind with explanations is designers need to estimate how far to move away from facts to explanations. The further one moves from facts, the more important it becomes to create videos that make processes and explanations transparent. And relevant video genres related to developing explanations involve analogies, commentaries, and expositions. I think a really fun, great example of developing explanations through commentary are some of the cynical movie trailers that people have made where they talk about all of the things that are wrong with a given movie. And that's a way to explain where the particular movie breaks down uh, as a piece of art. Forrest Gump. Relive the heartwarming tale of Forrest, a simpleton who bombards complete strangers with his entire life story. I've won lots of shoes. And Jenny, a suicidal junkie hobo. Experience the epic love story between this damaged woman and the mentally challenged war hero she manipulates. Whether it's sending mixed messages. I'll always be your girl. Forrest, you stay away from me, okay? You just stay away from me, please. So finally, I want to end this segment by just simply asking you to backwards map your video project one onto this learning outcome framework. And the question you should be thinking about is, what learning outcome did you promote in your first video project? Okay, let's move on to video project two. Now, we've already talked about how we're going to switch production style. We're going to focus on chalk and talk videos. And I want to remind you again of the independent dimensions of video. I'm assigning you the chalk and talk video production style, but all of the visual aesthetics and all of the production value decisions and points of interest are all under your control. We're going to use the same production process starting here in week 11, and we're going to go through the three stages of pre-production, production, post-production. And we're going to turn in video project two just before Thanksgiving, which is actually session 14 of the semester. So what are the parameters of video project two? Well, they're very similar to video project one. The goal is to produce an original, high quality educational video. The purpose is to practice using video to support a specified learning outcome. And I want you to practice presenting information in a concise and compelling visual manner. The length should be under three minutes. The topic, again, is up to you. You should be the authority on something of interest to you. I want to talk a little bit about graphic style. Your video must use one of the four main chalk and talk styles. Animation, presentation, tablet capture, or screencast. If you decide to go with one of the more work-intensive styles, such as animation, your video can be substantially shorter than three minutes, and that would be fine. So I want to end by focusing on a couple of good examples of some of the different chalk and talk videos. So the first one I want to emphasize here is the jigsaw method by the Cult of Pedagogy. The method of this particular video is using the presentation style, but you'll see they do an excellent job. Uh, and here's a few seconds of that particular video. Jigsaw is a cooperative learning strategy where each student in a group takes responsibility for one chunk of the content, then teaches it to the other group members. Like the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle, students fit their individual chunks together to form a complete body of knowledge. Next, I want to focus on the method of animation. Here's an excellent example of How Tsunamis Work by Alex Gendler. This is for Ted Ed. Let's watch a few seconds of that. In many ways, tsunamis are just larger versions of regular waves. They have a trough and a crest and consist not of moving water, but the movement of energy through water. And of course, there's also the tablet capture method. And you can see here, I've got introduction to logarithms. So let's just see a few seconds of this. If I said that two to the third power, well, we know that from the exponent modules, two to the third power, well, that's equal to eight. Once again, this is a two, it's not a z. 
And then finally, I'll close out with a really creative, inspiring example of using screencasting to convey a message. It came out quite a, quite a while ago, but this is the very famous screencast called The Machine is Us slash Using Us by, by Michael Wesch. And so let's watch a few minutes of that and enjoy. Okay, everyone, that's all for this week. Have a great session. I'll see you in Canvas.